What is going on everyone? Super excited to have you back here on my YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be discussing the best cardio for fat loss and to achieving your result. I'm just going to get into do you actually need to be doing cardio to achieve your goals and dropping body fat and getting the shape that you want. I'd like to stress this at an early point that cardio is a tool and it will help you, assist you to get to your results but it's not going to fix it. The problem is your nutrition, you need to look at that. But now we're moving on to the fun stuff. So what we're gonna do is talk about different types of cardio that you can add into your training and help you with your results. So I'm just gonna talk about three different types today. We've got high intensity interval training, we've got continuous training, and we've got lifts. Now I'm gonna list some pros and cons with each and every single one of these, and then, then it's very much down to your personal preference on which one you prefer. Ultimately, that is the most important thing. You need something that you can do continuously that you enjoy. There's no point walking on a treadmill for hours if you hate walking. Walking, okay if, if you're short on time you need to be doing sprints okay it's very much what fits into your lifestyle but we'll talk about that in a minute so the first one is HIT. HIT stands for high intensity interval training so that basically means that you're going to be working at 100% of your max between 10 to 20 seconds so I'm talking about heel sprints uh, interval sprints on the bike on the rower okay generally anything that's really going to elevate your heart up and go from 0 to 100 really fast so that's kind of that uh, when you do intervals, you do have rest intervals. So say, for example, say you're doing some HIIT training, you might sprint your heart out for 10 seconds, you might have a 50 second recovery, and then go into the next set. So generally, spark the heart rate up really, really high and looking at bringing it back down before we peak it again and back down, okay? So when you do HIIT, it goes down, goes up, and then your heart rate comes down, and then it goes up again, and it comes back down. That's what HIT is. So with HIT, I like to keep it anything less than 30 minutes, okay? It is a great tool for saving time. So if you're a busy parent or you're busy in the office and you haven't got that time to do cardio, you can do HIT and it will save you time. You can do a really good HIT workout in about 20 minutes. Now, some of the negative things on HIIT training is that it's very taxing on your body. So if you do five or six HIIT sessions a week, you're you're going to burn out basically and your joints are going to suffer from it. So it's very much trying to drop the amount that you do, okay, and spread it out throughout the week is the most important thing. Uh, and the other thing is recovery, okay. Now, if you're smashing hit five, six times a week, guaranteed you are not recovering and you're not performing well enough. You're not recovering enough, so you're not performing well in the gym. So if you do a lot of hip training, your resistance training will drop down, okay. It's getting about a fine line between the two. Uh, and most importantly, not everyone finds high intensity. Not everyone finds hit fun because it is bloody goddamn hard work. So that's kind of like the base level of hit for you. Talking about medium and continuous training. Now, if you're personally at the moment do high intensity interval training and you are doing like 30 seconds worth of work, you are not actually doing true hit training. You are doing medium continuous training. I hate to break it to you. Uh, so that's anything that's like 30 seconds or longer. Remember, you need to keep that about 10 to 20 seconds of max work for it to be hit. This is continuous training. Continuous training can be like 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, and it can be jogging. The only downside to that is you do have to put more time into this continuous training than you would with HIT. But it's kind of like the best of both worlds, in my opinion. So LIST stands for Low Intensity Steady State. So with LIST, it's a brilliant tool. So if you're someone that has a lot of spare time and wants to go outdoors and exercise, you can do so going for walks. The great thing with LIST is it's less taxing on the body. So you can do this five, six, seven times a week and it's not going to burn you out compared to the HIT where you need time to recover. The only disadvantage to this is, like I said, it takes a lot of time and it is quite boring. I mean, I've done it in the past where I've just gone on the treadmill and I've just walked for 40 or 50 minutes and it does get boring and it does eat my day. The only good for it, good thing for that is if that you're quite a busy person, so you've got to write emails and stuff, you can type on the treadmill and watch videos, so that's a good thing from that. Which one of these should you be doing to obviously get the best results? And that all depends on what your goal is, okay? If you're someone that wants to put on as much muscle mass as possible, something like the medium continuous training isn't gonna be optimal for you. You probably wanna be looking at doing something with less or something that's high intensity interval training, but you don't want this to jeopardize your training, so I would recommend doing less. Now, again, it all depends on your availability. How much time do you have to put into your sessions? Like I said, if you're a busy person, 
hit is really good for you. Again, if you've got a lot of spare time and you want something that is not going to burn you out, then you get less. But it all comes down to what your goal is and what your availability is. Most importantly, it's something that you enjoy and that you can consistently stick to. If you do not like high intensity interval training because it is too hard work, you're not going to stick to it because it's not fun for you. That is the most important thing, is finding a cardio element that you can enjoy, that you can stick to and continuously progress with it. The cardio is a tool, it's a great way of obviously burning some extra calories and making sure that we're creating a bigger deficit. It means that we're burning more calories than what we're consuming. But when it comes to fat loss, there's two things that we can do to obviously aid this. We can look at inputting more activity into our daily lives, so making sure we're doing more cardio, or what we can look at doing is reducing our calories. The problem with reducing your calories is obviously what you're going to do is your body's going to start shutting down and your metabolism is going to start slowing down and eventually you'll get cranky and you'll hate it. But when it comes to output, unfortunately, there will be a point where you can't burn any more calories and you can't put in any more time and that is not sustainable. My opinion generally is to try and get three to four resistance training sessions a week, which is optimal, and also back that up two or three cardio sessions a week. I just want to talk about tracking calories on machines. So a lot of you are using calorie trackers and they are on a lot of machines. So if you do something like a incline walk on a treadmill, for example, it will tell you how many calories you burn. Well, basically, that machine is lying to you. You're not actually burning what the machine is telling you because your metabolism is different, your height, your weight, there's so many different variables that that can't be correct. But not to say we can't use that information. So what you want to do is say you're doing 200 calories on the treadmill three times a week, we're going to make sure that we're consistently doing that 200 calories every week and then if we need to progress and do more then we can use that. So even though it's wrong, we can use that in some form of way. Let's talk about two really important things that obviously helps with fat loss and actually stores fat loss, and they are your cortisone levels. So that is stress management, and that is obviously sleep and recovery. If that is really stressed, will struggle to lose weight, and someone that has a crap sleeping pattern or hardly sleeps is not gonna get optimal recovery and they're not gonna see results. So there's something that you can definitely change, okay? So just make sure they try and make your life as stress-free as possible. I know it's difficult at the moment, but try and make sure that your life is stress-free as possible and also make sure you're getting in your sleep and recovery and that will massively help you with your results in fat loss. I'd like to put it out there that you do not need to do cardio in order to get amazing results and start getting the physique that you want to. I know a lot of people out there that train four or five times a week, do resistance training and they look phenomenal and they don't even touch cardio. But what I kind of want to do is get some people into doing more cardio because it helps with your VO2 max and your oxygen. Obviously, the more efficient your body is, the better you are going to recover and that's going to help you with your lifting. So if you're someone that isn't doing cardio, so say you're like a bodybuilder and you have an on-season and off-season, look to try and put cardio on your off-season because that will help you with your recovery and help you with your lifts. Just make sure that you're not doing five or six cardio sessions a week so you don't burn out. I briefly want to talk about kind of what I think is the best thing out there. Again, this is just my opinion. I like metabolic conditioning. I like combining long continuous training with high intensity interval training, but I also like to put a bit of weights in there. And that is what a METCON is. It stands for metabolic conditioning. It's making sure that the reps are slightly high or you can put them low, but it's putting the body under strain with conditioning and strength together. You need to find a form of cardio that you enjoy. And I've done lots of things over my time in the fitness. So I've done cross country, I've done boxing, I've done swimming, I've done lots of things but at the moment I'm really enjoying metabolic conditioning and it's helping me with my weightlifting. What I want to try and do in the future is to show you a couple more videos on how to do that and I believe this is the best way forward. It's something that you can do in a short amount of time or you can do it in a long period of time and it's something that you can do all year round and you can mix it and match it and have fun with it. So take running for example, running gets boring for the normal people, I mean I used to hate it, I've still hate now to be honest but I used to love it years ago but it does take out a lot of time and I find that metabolic conditioning lifting some weights and cardio is the sweet spot for me like I said I want to try and encourage a few of you to try and take up metabolic conditioning uh, and do kind of like emoms and stuff like that so that's what I want to bring to this channel so something that you can do you can track and progressively get better and better and program this and it's something that isn't going to take a lot of your time and you can start seeing results straight away and improving on this
The last thing that I want to talk about is obviously NEAT. NEAT is the most important thing when it comes to obviously calories burn, okay? You can do as much car as you want, but someone that looks after the non-activity thermogenesis is going to accumulate more calories over the day than you will put in a training session. So say you do a HIIT class, you burn 400 calories, that's fantastic, but you sat in front of a desk for a long period of time. If you have someone that obviously walks to work, goes up loads of stairs, and is more active and burns 600 calories, they are going to get better results. So the most important thing is neat. Just try to make sure that you burn more calories throughout the day. So just make sure you're taking the stairs uh, and making sure that you're walking to work and loads of things like that. So that will have a bigger impact into your fitness and your results. So this question is, do you need to do cardio? Well, the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on obviously what your goals are and it also depends on your activity and your lifestyle. If you are a busy person, then again, it just comes down to your lifestyle again. But I do recommend doing a couple of cardio sessions a week, whether that's Metcons, long walking, or just something to stay active and just make sure you're burning calories. And that's the bottom line. Guys, it's now the end of the video. Hopefully you've taken away a lot of information and you can add this into your training or most importantly hopefully I've inspired a few of you. So if you have liked this video that I've done please hit the like button, please put a little comment below and please subscribe to my YouTube channel because that would help with the algorithm and help me out and hopefully we can get as much information out there and help as many people as possible. I hope you stay safe out there and I'll catch you with the next video.